welcome to Journeys and Journals. I'm Bernie Martin Beck, and I get to follow stories, people's history, and let them tell it in their own words. And the Wagners are here to tell their stories. And it is uh, full of all the pathos of up and down of life. Um, welcome. You are Claudia. I'm, I'm Claudia Wagner. And Orvin. This is Orvin or Wagner. Orvin. Yeah. Well, when I looked you up in the phone book, I saw that you had the O in there. And you're also? He's also known as Ed. His middle name is Edson. So he's Orv Edson. Orvin Edson Wagner, named after his dad. And uh, he kind of started most of his life, he went by Orvin. But it kind of got to the point where people were getting it confused, and he became Orville or Orvis or Orwin or something else. So he started going by Ed. <laughs> So some people know him by Ed. And you had lots of students during your lifetime. You've taught. I was teaching at Cal Poly San Luis Obispo, and my head of the department called me Orvis and everything. That's why I changed to using Ed. <laughs> I hear you. He taught physics uh, at Cal Poly San Luis Obispo uh, for eight eight years, wasn't it? How long? How long did you teach it at Cal Poly? About five years. Oh, five years. Five. And years. then you came north and taught in Oregon. Well, I taught at Rowe Community College for several years. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that was where I met him. Uh-huh. <laughs> well, <clears throat> we want to find out about your parents because they're beautiful people. I have a picture of them here. And if you look at this part of it, you think, isn't that like any wedding? Must have been 19 and what? 19, uh, I've got to look it up because I always forget. Uh, it was 1927. Oh, no. Is that right? Yeah. They, Sounds about right. 1929. 1929. Sorry. But when you're looking at this, you see that the story is one of tragedy. Mm -hmm. This is 19 and 30. 19 and 38 was when he was killed. 1938. Mm -hmm. And it says Ashland cyclist killed by blow from automobile. Mm -hmm. Yes. Now, he was going from work? I believe he was going from the place he was staying. He, he spent the week in Ashland uh, boarding at a, at a place and then would come home on the weekends because at that time you didn't travel back and forth every day. It was just too hard to do that and expensive. So he stayed in Ashland most of the week and did his work at, as the x-ray technician. And he was riding his bicycle from work to the Ashland Hospital at the time. And he was riding up Mountain Avenue. And a student, 17-year-old boy, was going too fast. He admitted he was going too fast. And he didn't see him. And he hit him with the car. And it crushed his chest. They got him to the hospital. And uh, um, he lived, uh, I think it was in the evening when it was going on, and so and, I think it was. And you boys got to visit, go and see, and say your goodbyes. What a. We never got to see him. He was unconscious. Right. So he never said goodbye. But yeah. there you were. Now, you were just little kids, not quite this little. This no. is how old? This one, he was probably about three. This was about the time that they moved up here from uh, California, because he was born in California, he and, and Delmer, his brother. And they moved up to Oregon when, when he was about three, almost four maybe, and uh, put a, built a home. His dad built a home up in the uh, Evans Valley area, up on what is now Horster Lane off of Pleasant Creek up there. And he purchased um, 30 acres up there for $600. Ooh. And he ended up uh, moving his family up, built a home up there, and um, lived there for a while. But he was an x-ray technician, and there wasn't any hospitals right here. So when, when Orvin was about the age to start school, they moved over into a rental home in um, uh, Griffin Creek area in, in Medford. And that's when his father started working at the hospital over there. And so... They were there for, for several years, and then when uh, 
Well, I guess it wasn't very long that you were over in... It wasn't. My dad was killed pretty quickly after he went to work. Yeah. Right. We weren't there very long. I was in first grade at Rogue River Academy. And, uh, and so then um, uh, the next picture that you have there that we're showing was taken at, at, the, funeral. at the funeral service. So they were oh. three small children, and, uh, and mother was left to care for him. So this one, this one is Orvin. Um, the other young boy is, is Delmer, and then their small sister, Elaine. She was about 18 months old, I think. And mom was how old? Was she, she was just, she was, she was in her 20s? She was born in 1903. 1903, so she would have been about what? 35 but, maybe, mm -hmm. somewhere in there. Heartbreaking story. Right. And I suppose the young man didn't have a great deal of insurance and there wasn't a big settlement and... No. No, she, you didn't get insurance, you was Adventist back then, it was wrong. <laughs> No, I but meant the other people. The other people. Well, the only th the the thing that they the settlement was that they would pay for his hospital uh, bills and the funeral bill, and that was basically all that they could do. So after that, she was on her own, pretty much. Mother of three with one year of college. Um, she, I'm not sure. If but she didn't have her nursing degree. She had been trying to get her nursing degree, or she was when she met his dad and oh, didn't romance. do that. So I'm not sure what it was. So she did not have her nursing degree, so she wasn't actually qualified to be a nurse. Um, she had actually, when she moved up here, had worked a little bit at teaching elementary school. So she, they went, left Medford and went to stay with her sister in College Place, Washington, and she took some correspondence courses from, now what was Home it? Study Institute. The Home Study Institute. The Adventist Institution. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so she got a job for the Seventh-day Adventist uh, Conference as a teacher. And she uh, came back to... Um, Sykes' came back to, Creek, right? Came back to Sykes' Creek, <laughs> and she home, homeschooled her children, but she also taught some other families that was well, the there. first grades one to three, she homeschooled us at home. And how did you get to this other school? You, your brother, and your baby sister. We walked down Sykes Creek Road to the bridge, went across Cougar Gap, and a total of about three and a half mile walk, and we, were, we had school with the Butterfields, another and, Adventist family. And, and how did you, how was the baby I mean, she's one year old or two, and how did she get to school? She we had, had to, to carry go to her, pull her on a sled, or in uh, a wagon. You said sometimes she used the wagon if, if there was no snow, but and the sled. <laughs> wow! Now, <clears throat> this place is still in your family. This, the home, the Sykes. home in Sykes Creek Place. Yes. See, I keep saying Sykes's because my friend Bill Young grew up there and he said you couldn't grow anything but rocks on that. <laughs> it must oh, be a no. different part of the property. <laughs> That's not true. We, my mom grew most of her own food when we were living there. Right. Okay, and what about wild animals? Did you see a lot of deer and <laughs> We didn't Still see do. a lot of deer, but I've seen a cougar or two up a tree looking down at me. <laughs> oh, I think I'd run real and quick. They, and they had a lot of, they had a lot of, uh, in the earlier days, they had a lot of rattlesnakes and things up there. And he said at one time that, of course, as children, they ran barefoot through the woods everywhere anyway, and said he and, and Delmer were running over there and jumped over this log and... Well, he walked on the log. Oh, you were walking on the log? And there's a rattlesnake on the log, and he walked on the rattlesnake. <laughs> And it rolled off the log. <laughs> Delmer rolled off or the log? Rattlesnake, rattlesnake rolled off the log. <laughs> I'm scared. I'm <laughs> but they, they, had some, they had some interesting times up there. There was, not, there was not a lot of houses up there at the time when they were there. Uh, there were a few, and his aunt and uncle, or his uncle, lived across the creek from us, from their home. Delmer was barefoot. <laughs> <laughs> but... Uh, um, but yes, mother, mother uh, taught over there. I, we were trying to go through. We, I haven't searched as much as I would like to, 
Uh, so I'm still working on this. This is a work in progress of finding the information. But I, I've just got to get to the part of your story that you went to these different schools, and this is from what we call the crackle, cracker box, right? That's from the cracker box, yeah. This that, was, this that, was Rope, River Academy. That, Rope River Academy. That was a school atop a hill, and last night I had a call from a man who is owned this property, sold it to the school, and next door he had an orchard, mm -hmm. and he grew pears. Oh, yes. What can you tell me about that story? Oh, we used to camp in the orchard and pick pears in the summer. My mom, we had a tent in the orchard there. <laughs> Is that how other people who harvested crops did, or just you? Just, just, uh, just our family, I think camped in the orchard with a tent in the orchard. And that name of that farm is still? I don't know if it's still Mine Arrow Orchards or not. Maybe it is. Well, I'm going to get to talk to him, and I want him to meet you and <laughs> hear your story. Um, this is the yearbook This was that school. This was a yearbook of 1948. Um, I believe the school was there before that. but. Um, Orvin's mother was teaching there at the time. She was teaching fourth, fifth, and sixth grades. And he was, at this particular time, he was a junior in, at the academy, and, uh -huh. his, and Delmer was a freshman in the academy. And their little sister was, I think, about fifth or sixth grade, somewhere in there. Here, another fun connection. My <clears throat> mother's cousin married Wilma Ross who was the preceptress at this school when it first opened, and it was a boarding school. Right. Small, small world. We're, can we get you to grow up a little bit farther? When did you get interested in electronics? Is that... Oh, that was when I was about 14, when we got into electronics. Delmer was about 12, and I was about 14. Then my mother gave us a room in the house for our electronics shop. And you probably made crystal sets, and that yeah, was... Yeah, we had all kinds of electronics. We did tubes and crystal sets. I shouldn't say this, but I kind of invented a transistor when I was 17. <laughs> oh, but no patent. But I didn't know what I had. <laughs> so, but they, they learned a lot of it on their own through school books. Uh, mother was very, very interested in education. She turned a room over in her house for them just to use as their electronics shop. And so they were able to make a big mess with their electronics whenever they needed to. <laughs> and, and where did you learn about electronics? Well, we have a world book encyclopedia that we wore out that section. They had a big <laughs> section in the world book, 1930 edition of, my, of the world book. I am so, you know, parents, Make it available to your kids. I know online it is, but you know, these growing up, it was just part of the fun that you had, right? And yeah. look at the patents that you guys have and the, what you've done with your education. Well, Delmer carried it out with Wagner Electronic Products, you know. And you carried it out teaching student after student. Well, he, he ended up getting his doctorate in, in physics. So he has his PhD in physics, and then he taught physics, and he has his own research lab now at, at our home. And does in the backyard, or yes, <laughs> <laughs> I didn't bring a picture of the one. Now it's this, off the other side. This was the original little house, and and now you've moved in. You've just added on. We it grew up and it grew out from the original house this original house that it started. Wow. <laughs> uh, and, so. and you said how much did mom pay for this? Or mom and dad bought this property. Do you know how no, much? This, this was one that, that uh, <clears throat> this was our one on Sykes Creek. And this was the one that her mother had purchased. And I'm not sure how much she paid on that one. But her mother she didn't had pay purchased. anything for her mother. But your mother did not because her mother gave her this piece of property after she was widowed. Property on the west side of the creek we got. Uncle Bert had the east side of the creek. I yeah. understand. Yeah. This document is so precious. Thank you for bringing it. Um, 
just tell me a little bit about why. Monkey Ward's Montgomery Ward, yeah. Oh, Montgomery Ward <laughs> yes. catalog. What's this about? Well, that's just an order, a Mon Montgomery Ward order, I think. Uh huh. And what did you order? Oh, he didn't. This was his this father that had ordered out of off of this one in 1937. So he would have only been seven years old. He wouldn't have cared. <laughs> what did but Dad order? He ordered parts to fix his Model T. <laughs> So the Model T truck. His Model T truck. And he ordered all of the parts from Montgomery Wards. And it came up to this whole grand total, I think, of $13.37 for all of these parts and pieces that he uh, needed to fix his truck. And that's on both sides of that paper. There's a lot of items there. <laughs> I can see that. <laughs> My goodness. So that's the way people who lived off the grid you still, they didn't have electricity. They didn't have No, any. not at that time. And it was you kids that came up with a way to have power? Did you? Well, that was on Sykes Creek Road when we had a, our shop in the, my mother gave us a shop, a room in the house for our shop. And then you, we just put a, we had put in an irrigation ditch and we took the water down a bank and ran a paddle wheel and ran a car generator in which we took to, the power to the house to charge our batteries. Right. So you had lights? Well, well we didn't use the lights too much because the car generator doesn't generate a, that much electricity. We just had some power to charge our batteries in the shop. But back then, they did have light bulbs that um, for 6 volts or 12 volts, well, 6 volts back then, had big light bulbs that lit up like regular 60-watt bulbs, but you drew an awful lot of power to get a 60 watt. So they, how, how they, did you light the place? The kerosene lamp. Yeah. The, uh, most of the time when he, they didn't get the uh, electricity from off of the power lines from the from Copco as it was called at the time. Didn't get that until you were in 1957. College. 57. No. 58. Was it, 58. Yeah, 57. Right. So, but you had you had power for your your electronic, your sh ham shack, and we'd call it your workspace. Yes. Um, you know what you've done? You boys, well, this Better Life TV was a Delmer dream. And right. people said it couldn't happen in Southern Oregon, not in Grants Pass, not up Sykes Creek. I mean, it couldn't go. They didn't know the tenacity you guys have. And it started at a very young age, obviously. Uh, obviously. <laughs> Ten-year-olds, 12-year-olds doing with mother's encouragement. Definitely. And mother encouraged them to keep learning and to learn. She was very much of an educator. for. Uh, and then after they were grown and then they're in college, I mean, she taught at very many, a lot of the different uh, schools around um, in the Adventist, um, in the West, basically, for the Adventist uh, conference. And uh, she ended up teaching clear up until 19, about 1966 or a little bit after that, or right around that time. And she finished up her teaching career here at, at the Grants Pass um, Adventist School. And I think this was probably the last year that she taught. And oh. so it has her. She taught fourth and fourth and fifth grade, I think it is, or third and fourth, maybe it is. Well, and, and so she had this, of course. So she touched a lot of lives with, you well, know, of, of can, young children. We can look at Delmer's picture, but now you don't have a picture in, in either of the books. How did you cut out the picture? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Been a long but time. He, but it's, the one where, when the one in, from the academy when mm -hmm. when he was there as a junior though, he he took out the one the major picture. But he also has one in here that he didn't get a chance to cut out for the organizations that he was in. So he was also in. He and Delmer were both in the boys' club. Oh, in with shirts that look alike. Yes, these jackets. Look, 
but uh, <laughs> now you brought a jacket that was pretty similar to this today. I didn't even realize that when he put it on, but it's a, a jacket that's very looks very similar to that one. If you, if you tell me it's the same jacket, no, it's definitely not the same jacket. Well, I don't think it's the same jacket anyway. No, I'm sure it isn't. Yeah, because you're a little bigger now than you were then, but that is very interesting. You guys have have done so much and. By the way, how long have you two been married? 35 years? 30? 36 A 36 years in August. Yeah, 36 in August. Oh, my goodness. So. And they're still holding hands. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, we do that quite a bit. <laughs> but. Uh, this, this whole story about how women did what they had to do when faced with hard times now, even Grandma had, had done some pretty courageous things, coming and buying the property next to Uncle. Oh, yes. And she, you know, of course, she, um, let's see, I don't remember now. I don't have the information right with me, but um, she was quite, she was quite a, uh, an entrepreneur herself. And, and she, too, was widowed. Is that right? She was widowed, but it was... I don't remember now when your grandfather died. It was, um, but I think a lot of this that she did, she actually did. He was busy running the farm, and back in South Dakota when she was, you know, purchasing property out here and tending to her children out here and and uh, seeing what was what was going to happen. But it was so important to true up on your property if you were a homesteader, mm -hmm. because you had nothing if you walked away. Right. But if you got the deed in your hand mm -hmm. is this 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 was the deed for this the is the deed that mm -hmm. says it belongs to you now then you could sell oh you could sell you could you could feel free that no one could come and take it away from you and uh he also um this was this was eugene may um that had this property here and his mother was uh, after she became a widow he helped keep her place going and made sure that they kept that farmed. So he actually farmed both lands for quite some time. And but this was this was to help his his mother also to have as a widow being able to have her her home and but the women the women did a lot of of the work. They they raised chickens and sold the eggs and had their money so that they could they could do a little bit of things like that of what they needed to do. Um, and his mother, after she was widowed, she worked very, very hard at not only the teaching school and giving piano lessons to, to children in the area, but every summer she grew a huge garden and she canned and processed all of it without electricity, mind you. And she assigned <laughs> me to be the cook. He was the cook and Delmer had the job of tending to little sister, making sure oh, she didn't get into trouble. You had a wood stove. In the, middle, stove, yeah. on, in the middle of the summer mm -hmm. with a canning kettle, pressure kettle. Um, did she have pressure canner or just hard? Didn't have a pressure canner, I don't think. We just used these big... Big kettles to boiling water in them. And you were kitchen help. That is fantastic. Was, yes. well, my mom wanted to work in the garden and she made me the cook. And, and he, he created a few, uh, there was some interesting things when I talked to his sister, interesting things we were talking about, a few things that he came up with. Some of them were pretty good recipes and some of them were not quite so good, like his bean cookies. Uh, I've never tra <laughs> tried those, but <laughs> it was one that became a legend in the family. <laughs> I made up a few recipes. <laughs> one of them was bean cookies. <laughs> now, do you do, still do cooking? Do you enjoy that? Well, I do ever. I did last night. He does every once in a while. Uh, he gets out of it as much as possible, but then so do I. So, <laughs> but uh, yeah, he's he's been been very good of uh, helping out with that, and and he's he's a good help around. He learned well. His mother needed the help, and the children helped. They that's See, what they needed. I just love that kind of story because that's relevant to us today. Um, it is. Kids need to learn the skills, and, and who knows, 
70 years later, you may have to cook up dinner. <laughs> <laughs> and even at 83 years later, you might have to. So oh, that's your age. Huh? Well, Delmer's 81 and I'm 83. Delmer might not like you to tell him that, but that's okay. <laughs> we did. <laughs> and still inventing. You both are still invent inventing and creating. The mind never slows down. It, well, sometimes slows, but not stops. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but yes, um, we're, yes, it's still, education is still important to both of us. And actually, we have a daughter-in-law who's also an educator now. And so that's a pretty important thing, and to be able to have kids to learn. Well, when I called yesterday, you said, my wife is working at substitute teaching, so please call back. <laughs> and, you know, I thought, this is fantastic because there's so much that we at this, I won't necessarily say mature years, but I am there, yes. <laughs> that we can do. You can create a television show or a because that's where it happened, for free and for nothing. You've done lots of creative things, obviously. If you could get the paddle wheel going, is it still there? No, I don't think the paddle wheel's there, but, but Delmer has uh, his own power plant for his own house that is working right now, I mean, that he has. And we he has a better creek than we do for power. So, yeah, because he even can sell back to the power company. Right. And, and so that's the things that, you know, you still go. And as long as and we can help. it's fun. It's fun creating. Mm -hmm. It is. And it's fun helping young people realize they can do that, too. I love to hear that. I love to hear that. I just have to talk about your hairdo. Oh, folks, <laughs> doesn't this look like pioneer stuff? That's the only <laughs> You're a very modern woman, and here she has this pioneer hairdo that I just think is, well, newsworthy. <laughs> I'm Bernie Barton Beck, and I just love to talk about history. Thank you so much to the Wagners for coming all the way from Weimar. <laughs> <laughs> and the Weimar Covered Bridge. Oh, my, I've got pictures of that when it fell down. Oh, that was... That was awesome. And they've rebuilt it so that it looks new, old. It, it looks like it did. They reconstructed it. And the school, it may be reenacted, re activated. Yeah. Activated. Uh, the school is a place on the hill. It's worth looking at. I invite you folks to drive out on a Sunday and take the road over the top, which I did with Delmer to see the museum on the other side of the hill. That's a wonderful one too, yes. Thank you so much for tuning in and thanks for being my guest. I'm Bernie Martin Beck saying goodbye for now.